Hello friends, good afternoon or good day you can say it's good afternoon from India. Uh, now um, I am going to present the, my next presentation on soil health and climate change part 2. As you know actually I left uh, uh, the effect of uh, climate change on soil health or soil quality in the first presentation that's why this is the part 2 of that presentation. In the first presentation, I, I, I did discuss about what is um, soil health or soil quality and how they are affected by different management practices, what are those quality indicators, how to go about measuring the soil quality or the methodologies. And um, since it's a big, uh, uh, that was a, a big presentation, so I made it to two parts where I will be dealing with the climate change. So as you know, global warming and climate change is most important phenomenon that is happening around us nowadays and it's been uh, a natural phenomenon of climate change but due to the human activities and the globalization and uh, uh, industrialization that it changed in the atmosphere uh, temperature and carbon dioxide and the rainfall pattern so uh, global warming is a phenomenon of climate change and it is characterized by a general increase in average temperature of earth which modifies the weather balances and ecosystem for a long time so for the long time if this phenomenon occurs they are definitely going to change the average temperature of earth and it is directly linked to increasing greenhouse gases so what are those greenhouse gases you know it these greenhouse gases are not nothing but the carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxide etc and in our atmosphere when concentration of these gases increases uh, then at that uh, that means that helps in increasing the temperature of earth and worsening greenhouse gases actually this is now the real cause of climate change so in fact the average temperature of planet has increased 0.8 degrees celsius compared to the 90, end of 19th century so each of the last three decades has been warmer than all previous decades since the beginning of the statistical surveys in 1950 so now so we can experience, we are experiencing this effect nowadays, having so many flood events, so many cyclonic events. So this is due to the cause of climate change. And if that is global warming, then what is climate change? So climate, as you know, is the average weather condition at a particular point on Earth. Typically, climate is expressed in terms of expected temperature, rainfall, and wind condition based on historical observations. So it's the long term observation so climate change it is a change in either the average climate or the climate variability the climate variability here the rainfall as well as temperature or average temperature maximum and minimum temperature that persists over an extended period of time so usually we consider decadal changes mean up to 10 years maybe changes that occurs in this climate variability like temperature and rainfall so we say that there is a climate change. So climate change describes a change in the average conditions such as temperature rainfall in a region over a long period of time. It's a not short period of time. So we have to remember that it's a long period of time. So according to IPCC, you know what is IPCC? IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They describe the 1.5 degree average rise in temperature might put 20 to 30 percent species on Earth's surface at risk of extinction. So how important the climate changes you can expect from this observation. If the planet warms by more than two degrees, most ecosystems will struggle. So we have to reduce this increase in temperature to maybe less than 1.5 degree. Because as you know, climate change is a natural phenomenon. So it will continue, but due to our human activities or human induced changes that happens in the atmosphere or the system that is causing climate change so if you look at actually um, the greenhouse gap at what that are the causes that the greenhouses there you know gases that they are the main cause of uh, green um, global warming leading to climate change so i must tell you what are those greenhouse gases these greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxide so if you look at this figure here as i told you it's a natural effect so how how the how the sun uh, how the surface of earth is getting warmer because 
if you look at this, the sun, the solar radiation, when it reaches the earth, some of the sun's energy is absorbed on the earth surface and converted into heat energy. And some are reflected back and to the space. But when it um, hit at the earth surface, then the heat energy rises and some escapes to the atmosphere, the atmosphere, but some of this energy encounters the gas molecules cellulose like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and scattered it and reflected back to the earth's surface. This heat energy actually increases the temperature of earth. So that's what actually you know that the greenhouse gas emission is natural phenomenon, but due to the human enhanced greenhouse gases, this layer of greenhouse gas, you can see that increase in the atmosphere. So, if you look at that sense, the greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon. However, the increase in greenhouse gases is linked to human activities. It is thus no surprise that the world's leading climate scientists believe that human activities are very likely the main cause of global warming. So, these human activities, what are those human activities that causes global warming leading to climate change? Let's move to the next slide where you'll have the list of all those greenhouse gases and causes. So, what are the causes of greenhouse gases? As I mentioned in my earlier slide, the human activity because of fossil fuels. So, fossil fuels is obviously the first choice of global warming as burning coal, oil and gas produces carbon dioxide, most important greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. Deforestation, the tree help in regulate climate by absorbing carbon dioxide and you know carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gas. So, with the increase in carbon dioxide concentration also increases the temperature of our surface. When they are cut down, these trees, the positive effect is lost. And the carbon stored in the trees is reduced in the atmosphere because when you cut it, then there, it will not trap, it is dead, so it will decompose and it will also release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And intensive farming, not only the ever increasing livestock, but also the plant production products or fertilizers, they also help in, help in nitrogen fertilizer, suppose increasing nitrogen fertilizer also release of nitrous oxide to the atmosphere depending upon the condition or the management practices you are following for different crops whether it's arable or non-arable so depending upon the situation that prevails in the surface of earth or in, in your cultivation area that will lead to uh, increasing greenhouse gas. In fact, cattle and seeds produce large amount of methane while digesting their food while fertilizers produce nitrous oxide as I mentioned Waste disposal or management methods, landfills are in and emits greenhouse gases and toxic gases including methane that are also released to the atmosphere similarly in case of mining also. So these are all the causes of greenhouse gases and these are caused by human activities. So you, you can guess how much greenhouse gases, how we are the responsible, we are the responsible person, you know, we are responsible for increasing greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere. So, how this climate change will affect our soil health? So, this is what actually I have a big diagram here. I have mentioned schematic representation potential links between climate change and soil health. If you see causes of climate change, as I mentioned here, the natural causes and causes by human, causes by human increases greenhouse gases and local activities, industrial activities, or globalization that helps in increasing temperature, rainfall, carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, and that will cause the climate change and climate change what are those factors that are temperature carbon dioxide and rainfall how they are affecting if you consider rainfall as one of the most important factor because because of increasing rainfall or decreasing rainfall or optimum amount of rainfall received for a particular place that changes the vegetation cover and that also increase uh, because as it is expected that most of the places in india maybe other parts of the world we are likely to get more rainfall. So that causes heavy rainfall because surface rain, you know, because the rainfall distribution will be very um, it's, it'll, it'll be very erratic. So what will happen, we'll receive more rainfall in a short span of time that will cause a severe soil erosion. So the rainfall pattern also help in you know loss of surface soil as well as other things. Similarly, if you consider the soil, you look at this ecological regime so because of rainfall the air regime heat regime and biological activity on the surface of the soil or in the soil profile and also which is linked to the soil fertility that will also change 
But if you look at this diagram, we also may have more detailed description. Climate change in change in temperature, carbon dioxide and rainfall pattern also change in land management practices. It influences because because of rainfall and temperature and carbon dioxide consumption, we are expecting farming practices also because because we'll con con uh, concentrate on here in farming practices. As you know, increase in carbon dioxide concentration will help most of the plants. That means it gives a fertilizing effect. So C4 plants will be more affected. It means they will produce more than C3 plants because they have the capacity to absorb more carbon dioxide than the C3 plants. Similarly, what will happen? So if you look at the soil, which provides the net pine productivity to the plants because the plants are grown on soil, so what are those soil health indicators that are affected by climate change? If you look at the soil, if you look at the increase in rainfall or other things, soil slaking and dispersion of aggregates that lead to surface scaling as well as available of water content and distribution in the profile. So rainfall pattern will change these indicators in the soils, that means soil quality or soil health. Similarly, what other things, water availability and soil texture, the function of rainfall. So when rainfall is uh, more or less depending upon the soil texture whether it's clay or less clay or more or uh, it's loamy type so there are different plant available water capacity you know reducing the plant available water capacity and or maybe decrease uh, there will be decreased water like or maybe increase in water like depending on the texture of the soil similarly other things that's tangent soil salinity because of temperature and rainfall patterns there will be also increase in salinity area or sea water inundation due to high rainfall also they may increase in coastal salinization so these are the, they need to affect the soil health the soil quality similarly wind and water erosion as i mentioned here that also is likely to be happen and decrease in uh, soil organic carbon reducing in temperature or maybe there is increase in soil organic in some places where temperature and carbon dioxide and rainfall they balance you know there may be chances of um, increasing net productivity and that also may help in carbon buildup. Similarly, nitrogen mobilization, phosphorus mobilization, other leaching, all those uh, processes that happen in soil and if nutrient transformation that will also affected by climate change. So all over, all together, the climate change will affect the soil health and will affect the soil health indicators. So these are all um, the factors that will be affected by climate change. But what are those managing practices to reduce the negative impact of climate change across the soils? So the most important, as you know, plantations. So because you are growing plants or trees, they will absorb carbon dioxide, a big amount of carbon dioxide will absorb. This is the best possible ways to mitigate the negative impact of climate change. But there are other factors such as you can go for conservation of the system where you are leaving ample amount of residue to the surface that helps in not only conserving soil moisture, also increase the soil organic carbon. That means your management practices that you follow for your agriculture that will also change a lot of things, you know, um, and, and that will, whether it's climate smart or not, it will tell you what to do and what not to do. But in my opinion, all of microbes to convert soil carbon to stable plants so depends upon the what soil environment you are creating through your management practices. Then what things do you avoid? Avoid farming techniques that destroy soil carbon. That means reduce nitrogen application because you should always go for optimum application of nitrogen so that the soil carbon fertility is maintained. Then carbon eaters, then carbon builders. So you go for carbon building just like on the system. Reduce use of first pesticides and fungicides. Then use of correct tillage methods that I mentioned already. Control of without damage. And then, what are things we avoid? Avoid soil and water conservation. So erosion. So avoid soil. So you go for soil and water conservation measure. Avoid burning of stubbles because there are a lot of carbon dioxide will be lost to the atmosphere. But through conservation management and practices, we will store more carbon in the soil. Encourage vegetation cover. So more the vegetation cover, more carbon build up, and definitely we are reducing the temperature. Then careful planning and management, time and application, fertilizer applications. So should you go for applications, what type of soil, whether arable, non-arable soils, whether we'll go for replacement or broadcasting or what type of things we need to do, what management practices regarding nutrients we follow, you should know. So conservation measures to maintain peatland moisture. So that needs to be whether the peatland is increasing temperature, they may decompose or release carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So coastal management options as well as conservation of low-lying vulnerable coastal habitats 
needs to be planned carefully with considerable possible impact on process or gas flux. So, these are all management practices to reduce the negative impact of climate change. So, friends, I hope this will help you uh, uh, better understanding what I uh, presented. And if you have any queries, all those things, please contact me. You have my email, all those things. So, I hope uh, this helps you and uh, um, 